Hey, what's up guys? It's franchise 9 g 3 and I'm back with yet another way to create shapefiles with Python. So today I'm going to be looking into Shapely and Fiona. So I've definitely heard of these before and I always see them together like Shapely and Fiona. And I wasn't exactly sure why uh, or what the relationship between the two was. So um, this web page does a nice job of explaining what the difference is. Um, but basically Fiona is for working with the, the shapefile file structure. So it's for like opening and reading and writing the data. Um, whereas Shapely is for actually manipulating and working with geospatial data. Um, so without, uh, without Shapely, we wouldn't really be able to insert um, geometry uh, data, I think. Don't quote me on that, but uh, that's the basic relationship between the two. So you often see them paired together like that. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right in. So I'm just going to Google um, how to create Shapefile with uh, Fiona and Shapely. And this is the page that I, uh, I used the most. So that's exactly what we want to do. So using Fiona to write a new shape file from scratch. Um, so yeah, let me show you what, what I'm working with in Python right now. So this is just, um, I have a, a CSV file that has um, position data in it. So latitude, longitude. So um, just opening that data up and then looping through each row. And in each row, I'm pulling out uh, uh, specific uh, pieces of the data and then um, converting it to decimal degrees. So as long as you have a list of um, latitude, longitude points, you should definitely be able to follow along. Um, I'm just doing this because I have this all handy and set up. Um, but yeah, don't let this stop you if, if you don't have this file. Um, I think I put this on my GitHub too, but yeah, the point is it's, you just, all you need is points, like latitude, longitude points. Um, then you can follow along. So let's go back to that web page and um, trying to find what I used. So this is an answer. So this guy is saying your script becomes, and then he gives a nice concise um, bit of code right here. So I'm going to copy this whole section and just paste it in our code. And we sort of just have to integrate it into our code. So Let's see here. So we want to, so notice they have a for loop and their for loop also has latitude longitude points. So we need to basically take what they have in their for loop and put it in our for loop. So let's get rid of all of this. We're going to need this in a second, but for now I'm going to put that here and then I'm going to pull this Fiona and put that right here and then we need to indent this all right so it's starting to come together so what's going on at a high level so we're importing the csv we're opening our csv file to loop through it and then we're opening this fiona writer which it's going to allow us to actually write a shape file so we actually need to give it a um a location to write that shape file so I'm going to copy this just because it's handy and just paste it here and I'm going to rename it to Fiona Shapely Shapely. I think I spelled that wrong dot shape. All right. And all right. So from EPSG, this is the coordinate reference system. So I don't know what this projection is, but, um, WGS 84, which is very popular. And that's what we're going to use as four, three, two, six. And it's just saying driver as reshape file. So that's like what's going to control how this is made. And you see this thing called schema. So we need to create a schema for our shape file. So let's try to find an example of schema. So they have an example right here. So your schema. So I'm just going to put that right above when I open the shape file and I'm going to clean this up. So there's a lot in here. We don't need this many 
um, definitions, I guess. It's easier for me to read it like that. Why is this complaining about... Oh, we need one more bracket. All right, so this is basically telling Fiona what what the shapefile is going to look like. So we're saying the geometry is going to be a point and the properties. Now these properties are basically what fields do you want to put in here. So I'm going to call a field and just call it name. And then this value here is what type of field is it? So we don't want it to be a float. I want it to be a string. So you can just write str. And then um, that's fine for now. So let's just have one thing in there for now and we'll add something else later. So we have our schema and yeah. Okay. We need to import Fiona now. So we're getting these warnings cause we don't have Fiona. Um, so I already have Fiona installed so I can just say import Fiona. Um, but if you don't have Fiona, Fiona installed, you're going to have to install it. Um, so I use Conda since I'm using Anaconda Python. Um, so I can just say conda install Fiona and I'm sure with pip, you can say pip install Fiona. Um, but if anyone has any trouble, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to help you out. Um, but yeah, so we're still getting a warning from this from EPSG and let's take a look at this page. And I think we need to, yeah, we need to import that a little bit differently. So it's for, in a different module, I guess. So just import it like that. All right, what else? Okay, so we don't have, so we can tell these things are coming from Shapely because we don't have Shapely installed. And you notice this is like dealing with um, the geometry. So we need to grab Shapely. So let's try this. From Shapely, Geometry, Import Point Mapping. Okay, cool, it's starting to come together. So um, so we, we need to define our geometry, basically. So that's what's going on here. So we're saying point, we're just creating a variable. This could be called anything. Uh, you can call it the point, the point. And now we're using this point um, method from Shapely. And we're defining a point. So in here is where we need to put the latitude longitude. So whatever variable you have your latitude longitude in, just throw it in here uh, in a float value. So I'm going to say float um, position long longitude decrees. And then same thing for latitude. And it needs to be in this order. Otherwise, it's going to place it somewhere else in the world. Um, but yeah, that looks good. And now we have the attributes. So, so this is basically just telling what goes where, like what's mapping to what. So let's get rid of this because this isn't what our data looks like. We just have one attribute here. So remember when we defined our schema up here, we said we want something called name and we want it to be a string value. So this property, this is going to be the name and then what value do you want to put in the name? So here, why don't we just put, um, so we have heart rate. So that's a piece of data. Actually, let's not do that yet. Let's just write, let's just write, this is the name value. And then we just need to write, actually write it. So uh, points not showing up because we spelled, we renamed it to the point. And then it's just, we're just um, defining the properties here with this, um, this dictionary. All right. I know that sounded probably a little confusing. I probably could have done a, a clearer job explaining it, but let's just run this and see, see what happens. Okay, so it did something. I'm gonna open up ArcGIS Pro and just take a look at, at the uh, resulting shape file. All right.
right, let me just make a new project real fast. Alright, let me find where I put that shape file. Um, where is it? Alright, right here. So I'm just going to grab this shape, bring it into Pro. There we go. So we have our data and it, it looks like it's placed in the right spot. Now let's inspect, and yeah, the, the geometry is right, uh, but let's inspect the attribute table. So you'll notice we have the shape column. This gets all, both these two get added automatically. And then this third one name, this is the name field that we specified. And you notice every single value is the same because we literally just hard coded this text right here. But what if we wanted to dynamically update that? So let's do that. So I'm going to remove this and so this is the name value. So let's add another value. So remember, in order to do this, we're going to have to add another field to our schema up top here. So this is going to be, so put a comma there and let's call it heart rate. So I have heart rate in this data and it's a variable right here. So we're just going to pass that um, into it. So let's just, let's just put it as a string for now. Actually, yeah, let's just leave it as a string. Uh, so that changed the schema definition. Now we actually have to, when we're um, writing it, we need to tell it where to go. So down here, we'll just say heart rate. And that's going to be what value. So we don't even need a string there. We can just say heart rate. So now every time it loops through, it's going to put whatever value heart rate is um, as that as that uh, data. So let's just delete this and let's try rerunning it. All right, super fast. Um, so let's bring it back into Pro. There we go. And let's look at the attribute data. And there we go. We have another row with um, all this data in it. So I know we, we made this a text so you can see the type is text there, but really this is uh, numerical data. So it's like an integer. So why don't we do it do that instead? So let's just run it one more time. And I'll just show you that, that, that it's easy to just change. Instead of a string here, we want to define this as an int. Um, so let's just run that. All right. And open it up. And now we should see that it's a double actually. That's interesting. I wonder why. Huh. I guess that just must be how Pro interprets that data as an integer. I wonder if it's maybe because this heart rate value we didn't explicitly say it was an integer. Uh, let me try this. Let's just see if that fixes it. All right. No, still double. Yeah, I uh, I have no idea why it's behaving like this. Uh, I'm going to stop the video and, and look into it a little bit. But yeah, hopefully that video was helpful. Um, it's just showing you the basics of how we can quickly uh, create a shapefile with Fiona and Shapely. All right, thanks for watching. Hey guys, so I took a look at the shapefile in QGIS and sure enough it shows up as an integer there. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on. If anybody has an idea, um, please just leave a comment. I'm, I'm curious why, why it would show up as an integer in QGIS, but um, in ArcGIS Pro, and I also did look in ArcMap, it, it's showing up as a double. 
Um, yeah, not really sure what, what's going on there, but interesting. It's interesting. All right. Thanks for watching.